First World Order Radio, final lead, final lead. We are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding levels in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding levels in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Order. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have an activated pilot man in which I produced this black chemical called melanin. We, what we did was... First World Order Radio back once again. Your host, Dr. Elaine Bay. And we have our co-hosts coming on, Brother Olabala, Brother L, are you here? Peace, God. Peace, God. Peace. How you doing? Peace, Brother Olabala. How you doing? Great, great. Glad That's to be good. back. Good. No doubt. We're definitely happy to be here to get it in one more time, you know, to get the information out to the people. And um, All right. tonight we're going to be dealing with trust, land patterns, allodial titles, and the UCC. And most of all, executive letters as well as also nationality, number one. Nationality is still the call of the day. And if you have not nationalized them or reclamated, as we say, then we think that you might need to. Um, it is definitely um, a part of the beginning process of freedom, as we would say. It's not the end product. It's the beginning process. So um, mm-hmm. for those listening... You definitely need to um, reclamate, get your nationality out there on the um, declared on the public record, and that is important based on the fact that you are putting something on record in which that kind of act what they have on record, which is your birth certificate. So that means in the process you would need a live claim birth form or a baptismal record, also to go on record in order to kind of act what they have put on record in which that. For those who don't know, that is a bond. That is a warehouse receipt. That is a chattel paper. Mm-hmm. That's what the birth certificate is. All right? Um, meaning, your feet on the original contract, the original birth certificate, your feet was put on that contract showing that you had standing. All right? Showing that you were standing. All right, and uh, if you ever look at the way that the feet prints are put on the old ones, they was put at a 45 degree angle. So they knew what they was doing to you. They were saying that you had standing on this contract every time of that morality. So they were saying that you was um, birthed, you know, from the waters, which you was birthed from your mother's waters, and brought to shore. 
bought the land and here's your doc your docket or your document in order to show forth that that was the case. And also part of the docket you had a doctor to speak on your behind in order to initiate the process of the breath process or breathing it. Um, apparatus, as we would say, inhalation, mm-hmm. insulation, and it was at that point in which that you was turned over with the nurse coming into the room, declaring to your mother, what is the child's name, the mother's father's name, where they can make up this contract, this bond, which is part of that morality of maritime law. Mm-hmm. Um, so hence, they brought you from um, a natural birth or birth because you know ships are birth. So hence they saying that your physical body is the vessel, and that vessel or ship was brought to shore by them. So hence they was able to transfer a title to them by way of that birth certificate by saying that you had standing by them putting your footprints upon that contract. That is on the original one. You most people have never seen the original contract, the original birth certificate. Right. Not in your day time. In the older times, in the older days, probably like in the um seventies and on back, you know, to the nineteen fifties, between nineteen fifties and seventies, for that twenty years, um, people might have gotten a copy of that as a souvenir. You know, or something like that. But the original one, they put that on the stock market and use you as collateral. Use your name. Use your standing um, as collateral. And it's on the IRC, which is the Internal Revenue Code, you're worth $650,000 to $1.6 million mm. on average. At birth, because it's worth your weight in gold. So if you weigh between 5 to 10 pounds, that is approximately how much you are worth to them, 650000 to $1.6 million in gold. And, of course, as long as gold goes up, the price of your collateral goes up also, even though the United States do not have enough gold in order to ensure the 300 million people that are here within the so-called United States. But the standing, the way in which that the banks can do what is called infractionalized banking, um, they mark up everything 10 times the value. So by the time you reach maturity, you're worth hundreds of millions of dollars. All right? That bond is. And so you should be able to set off all your debt based on that original bond, based on that bond, because a bond is a negotiable instrument. So you be able to show you should be able to tap into that negotiable instrument in order to set off all your debt, whether it's student loans, whether it's mortgage, whether it's any type of bills that you may have, you should be able to do so. That is the science of this because since House Joint Resolution 192 since June 5th, 1933. There has been no gold backing the money, so therefore it's paper for paper. By 1972, up under Richard Nixon, there was no silver backing the money. So actually for the last 40 some odd years, all right, 41 years, we've been actually using air. Mm-hmm. Monopoly Never. money. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Fiat. Monopoly money. Fiat. Um, FRN, which is Federal Reserve Notes. Mm-hmm. IOUs. Promissory Notes. Whatever mm-hmm. you want to refer to it as. These are still negotiable instruments in the sense that um, you can do barter and trading um, amongst yourselves in that regard utilizing the FRN, so Fiat knows, but since you do not make it, and since Congress do not make it, which is actually um, by way of the Department of Treasury, or the United, Secretary, United States Secretary of Treasury do not make it, 
um, and it's being printed through a centralized banking system. And Thomas Jefferson already warned us that if we ever was allowed for a one banking system to come together in order to monopolize, to monopolize the money, then, you know, we would surely be a debtful country, um, country basically. So, um, you know, that's how all of this is basically being ushered in right now. So, the first thing that you should do is reclamate, get that, you know, information done. That means anyone who has a slave name, government name, needs to correct that name or correct that status. And you can do that through an affidavit of common law name correction. You need an affidavit of nationality, affidavit of citizenship, affidavit of truth, affidavit of facts, affidavit of denial of corporate status, affidavit of non-taxpayer status. Mm -hmm. And we help with that process. Anyone who wants to know more about it, call us at 910-364-9099. That's 910-364-9099. All right? So this is the primary thing that you need to focus on for those who are just entering into this type of information, All right? The second thing would be able to move around in the arena properly, and that would be act, we recommend doing your executive, your executive letters, right, or your executive letter, all right, um, or executrice letter. So... When you do your executor letter or executor's letter, male or female, what happens is that you make your birth name, which is your slave name, government name, whatever you want to say it is, your straw man, name slot in the caps, you want to make that civilist more tooth in law, meaning that you want to make it look dead in the eyes of the law so that they cannot bring up that name outside of a copyright trade or trade name in which that would be estimated at $1 million for each offense for use of that particular name. And you want to transfer all of that over to your indigenous application, which is the name in which that you now use for yourself with that meaning and know what it means. Kind of breaking up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, break it up there, brother. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, repeat yeah, that again. Yeah, it never fails when you get to this type of information. Yeah, I know that it started breaking up when you started going over that. Yeah. Right. right. Uh, which part did you get the chance to hear me say, bro? Yes, uh, uh, I know you talked about the um, uh, getting the affidavits of truth, the affidavits of. Uh, right, the, affid- the very affidavits, that's what we were saying, is that we help you with that. Um, actually, do the documents for you, and then we send them back to you. Get a notarized when you sign them. Get right. a notarized, mm-hmm. take them to the register of deeds in your local county, um, right. house, which is the register of deeds. And you put it on the so that kind of breaking up, breaking up. All right, this is what we're going to do. Hold on. You don't want people to lose this part, you know. No, that's what I'm saying. This is the fear. Yeah, definitely. Two days. Yeah, yeah. I had to stop him. I had to stop him mid sentence because I don't <laughs> want to waste that waste that yeah. energy because I know he's yeah. about to go in. Right, brother. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's good. How's that thing, brother? Uh huh. Everything's good. Oh, I'm I'm doing well, brother. How are yourself? I'm great. I'm great. You know. Oh. Trying to get on uh, last week, you know, was a little, little difficulty. But I was, you know, I'm always there. I was listening in. It was a great show. Oh, okay. Wednesday. Um, oh, uh, the one week. that I was on, um, um, what was it Monday? Oh, Monday. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I missed it for part of that show, more. Yeah. yeah. I was there. I was there in spirit, you know. I was there, you know, and I got. I was pumped up at the end because I, I, you know, I was just, 
you know, listening in. It was great information, you know, and uh, definitely we got to make sure that people get it. So, you know, everyone, you know, just relax. You know, we're working out. Yeah. A little technical difficulties. We'll be there with you shortly. Oh, yeah. These things happen, you know. Yes, they do. You know, like, they, like they said, you got to roll with the punches. That's <laughs> right. Especially when you... Uh, He's sending out uh, information like he's just sending out tonight. So. Oh, yeah, definitely, you know. Yes, yes. Let me mention like this, you know, because I'm already done what you're talking about as far as nas- getting nationalized and everything. Yeah, so definitely, I'll... you know. Because one thing to just learn about, you know, your nationality and birthright, but then you have to know, okay, all right, I, I, I'm nationalized. Now what? Now what? What I do now? Not to get, not to get you breaking up more. What's going on? I was breaking up there. Yes, sir. Okay, What's maybe he's on, working man? out. They want to really clown yeah, maybe tonight, he... I guess. Yeah, I guess uh, he's trying to work things out. I don't know what's going on, but yeah, I'm just talking just to keep things live, you know. Yeah, still um, breaking up. You know, we'll we'll see how it go. But yeah, definitely. Can you hear me now? Yeah. So yeah, you know, definitely. You know, people nationalize. You know, you want to know what you know what what now? You know, okay, I nationalized. Now what? You know, I can't hear you, you at all. Live. Touch y'all, boy. Oh, boy. You know? Uh. You hear me? Stay on the line here. I'll be here when y'all get back on. Can you see your Emmy? Oh, uh, yeah. Loud and clear, boy. All right. There we go. All right. So let's get up into it. We were saying that nationality is the call of the day. 
It still is and will forever be until our people are free. And this is just the beginning process of freedom. This is not the end process. So please um, understand that. All right? Nationality deals with the fact of having land tied back to you. All right? Hence, you have a tie to the land. And when you use the term more, that instantly ties you back to land. Because when you look up in Black's Law Dictionary under land, fourth edition, you will see the word more is M O. OS better inside of the definition of land. So um, that gives back nationality as well as all global nationality, global citizenship in the sense. All right? Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Can I ask you a question for a, a friend of mine? Can you hear me? Okay, brother. I just want to ask yes, you a question based on what we was talking about uh, the other day. Now, I have a friend of mine right. who is from uh, Trinidad, which we all know is part of America. Now, I was trying to explain to this person that uh, Trinidad is, is part of the dominion of a Mexum. So how would someone who uh, is coming from Trinidad, Jamaica, Mexico, uh, Puerto Rico, or any of these different areas in America, how would they go through the nationalization process? Well, remember, uh, we are a global people. Um, one of our readers always have said that, you know, um, the former chairman of the New York Panther Party and national spokesman for the Nation of Islam, Dr. Khaled Mohammed. Um, said Africa is our home, but the world, you know, so globe, you know what I'm saying? Um, no, Africa is our throne, but the world or the globe is our home. So um, that's what we understand, you know, and so we walked all seven continents and sailed all seven seas, you know, and actually, you know, you know, we can't say Europe is actually a continent. You know, um, Europe actually was Asia Minor. You know, we know all continents begin with an A and end with an A. You know, America, as in North America, Central America, South America, America mm-hmm. in, begins with an A and mm-hmm. with an A. Um, Asia, you know, um, begins with an A ends with an A. Africa begins with an A ends with an A. Um, Australia, you know, begins with an A ends with an A. So uh, we know the continents in which that begins um, it ends with A's. You know, Europe is the only one that do not begin with the A. It ends with the A. It mm-hmm. starts with the E and it ends with the E. So, um, it is not technically under that name, you know, part of a continent. But it is and was known as Asia um, historically um, in some regards. You know, but like I said, nationality wise, when we're looking up land, um, and you look up the word land and you find the word more is embedded inside of the definition, um, that ties actually back to land, regardless of where and what land mass we move to as being the original people because we cannot be pigeonholed into one land mass. Of course, everyone just say, well, you know, we just came from Africa, but um, like we said, based on archaeology by Michael Creedmoor, he stated specifically that we were um, here in the Americas over 600 million years ago. You know, yeah. I mean, I mean, actual scientific, archaeological proof that we were know to metal, you know, 600 million years ago, right? And that's 400 million years before the continent drift. That they told us about in history. They said the continental drift occurred around 200 to 250 million years ago, when the continents began to break apart and um, you know begin to spread out like they have, like what we see currently, you know, on the planet. At one time, all the land masses were together, it was called Mu or Pangaea or Asia, you know, um, for the various names, you know, that we have in history, you know. So. Um, in that regard, you know, the ones from Mexico, 
the ones from the Caribbean or the Caribbeans, as we would say, the um, adjoining islands, um, all of them are part of America. This is America, you know, whether it's North, Central, South, or the adjoining islands. Uh, the adjoining islands in history is called Americana. So it's all of America. The Western Hemisphere is America, you know. So um, when you're dealing with that, you know, nationality is very easy, regardless on the fact if you have a green card or if you have a visa or whatever the case is, or even if you claim to be a citizen of the United States. Actually, you aren't. No one is because the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. That's the loophole. Right. And then they showed the loophole when they told us about the Dress Scott case, and they told us about the Dress Scott case in high school. You know? They said it was a man from St. Louis, Missouri, who went before the courts, and there was nothing which that a white man was bound to respect that a Negro has. So, therefore, right. um, but they also told you that we're not citizens, nor will we ever be citizens of the United States. But that is what it says with the definition was that we read okay, on citizenship, is that it says the only one in which that meant to be citizens was so called white. And it says mm-hmm. those of Negro and African descent was never meant to be citizens. And it also says Aborigines. So that means that those who was here and those who was brought here, neither one was to be citizens. And neither one mm-hmm. had citizenship. So that's the reason why um, the loophole had to open up with the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. With us claiming our own citizenship, our own tribal affiliation, our own nation, Declaring our own nationality, declaring self-sufficient, self-autonomous, self-government. All of these things are mentioned within the um, um the first through the thirteen first articles of the Declaration of, of um, Indigenous People. You know, so um, in that regard, brother, anyone in the Western Hemisphere who wants to be reclamated into Washington. Can be reclamated into regardless of the privileges that we say they have acquired from the de facto government. Mm-hmm. But remember, this is not the de jure government. We read to you Monday that the government that was here prior to this government was the Al Moroccan government. Mm-hmm. And it is shown within the definition of morality and it's shown within the definition of consular court. In parentheses, in the um, fourth edition, Black Solitary. It specifically says Morocco in the sixth edition also. Go to the sixth edition of Black Scholars Dictionary. It has Morocco in parentheses. Yeah. So this government, and not only was the Al Moroccan government here, also it was referred to the Songhai Malan Empire. It was known as the Washington Empire. It was known as the Kushite Empire. It was known as the um, Empire because the Omex. With the Omexums. And the word Omexum comes from, from the Omex. In which that came from out of the interior of Mexico. So how is it that Mexicans can't um, become, um, you know, um, nation, national, um, having a nationality or national members? Thank you. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. the Omex came from out of the interior of Mexico, in Tabasco, in La Venta. You know, if you go to Cancun right now and walk down the street, you're gonna see a um a grande a grande um a, a, a gigantic um head in the middle of the street of the Omex. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Looks like my grandmother. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And all right. those so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, so, I want you to say right, that on 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 right. air because uh, you know people are, are really confused because they come across people, you know, uh, you know it's like, yeah, I got this green card. How 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 can this nationality thing work for me? You know, hey, I, I'm not even a U.S. citizen, so you know this has to be made clear. So I want you to say this on the air as documentation, you know, because it's on going to be on the archives. So yeah. you know, I want you to say that. Yes. Because I was yeah, just got to read uh, Jose Pimienta Bay's book of the fellow children in the New World, and uh, he was saying about people have to be citizens of the United States, and he used the word 
uh, he never he always addressed black, Negro, colored, Ethiopia, but he ne- never addressed people calling themselves African Americans. He never addressed that. And some of the things he had in this book, I can see why some wars had a problem with his book, although it's a very interesting, interesting book. It has a lot of good, good information in it. I still recommend it for more to, to have in their library, though. So there was more who actually had a problem with his book? There were people who always had a problem with it. I don't know why. Hmm. Uh, right. I didn't have a problem with it. I, some of the things I think he should address African American some, but he never addressed that. Why? Right. Uh, well, right. He never, got into, the, right, he never got into the deep issue of nationality. Okay. He never did um, into the issue of nationality. I didn't think that he wanted to become political. He he wanted to stick more towards the historical aspect and the political aspect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's 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 his avenue. Yeah, that's his avenue. That's what, yeah. He does a great job. He does a great job of what he does. Yeah, that's why I say I think everyone should still have his book in their library. Yeah, everybody has their their avenue. Yeah. Everybody has their lane. You know, what, what, what's their thing? You know. Right. Exactly. So. Um, as we were saying, anyone who wants to recommend him to Washington definitely do because Washington is a nation um, and part of the former empire in which that was here, known as the Mexican Empire, known as the Kushite Empire, known as the Songhai Malian Empire, known as the Ultimate Empire. All of that was known as the same thing. What they have done is give it different names and then they reconstructed history in order to make us think that they were different people throughout the various times when they were people. Um, during the same time, during different times, same people. You know, the um, people never change throughout the history. You know, so um, we have to realize that. You know. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. So all those people from those particular areas, uh, Trinidad, <laughs> Jamaica, Mexico, uh, which are part of uh, America. <laughs> It applies to you too. Mm-hmm. Right. Especially since you're not in your homeland, you know, because like what we were saying um, last week, we were talking about Puerto Rico, you know, there's no such thing. Bonconian or either we would say Tiano. That is the better yeah. Tiano or Arrow. You know, the Tayanos are descended from the Arawak and the so called Spaniards, which are tools. So, uh, we're talking about the Arawak people, um, mm-hmm. or Tiano. Yeah, uh, yeah the so, Maroons. The Maroons. Right, the Maroons. Right, in Jamaica, was known as the Maroons. Exactly. Uh, Marcus Garvey Mar- was a Maroon. Yeah, so, uh, Moroccan. Right, that was the community. Right. And the word Maroon is tied back to the word Moor. Yeah, yeah. They got a team in Morehouse University called them. You know, a lot of people don't catch on to that Morehouse. <laughs> Ain't that something? Uh, maybe because I think they, I think they talk about a, a person's last name being Moore, M O O R E, instead of uh, 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 tying us back to the land. You know. Right. But well, we had this bootleg sister in order to confess to us and um, to my own wife, that, um, father. Um, they was talking, and, you know, he was talking about the Moors, and she said, oh, yeah, she said, most of us are Moors. And she just busted out and said it. She, I guess she didn't realize that she was telling you no know, secret, you know, saying to a brother who was not, part of the so-called boule, but the way he was talking, she just assumed that he must have been because he more information than the average Negro. And, mm-hmm. you know, she just came out and just said it. You know, no problem. Mm-hmm. You know, so that goes back to what I read within, remember, we was reading The Miseducation of the Negro by Carter G. Woodson. And he said, most of us are not. Africans, because we've never been to Africa, and plus, most of us were born and what came from right here. You can write in the book, you know. So, and remember, those who want to say, "Well, that's 
Uh, well, he graduated, you know, second graduate of Harvard. You know, he was behind W. Du Bois. And remember, Carter G. Wilson wrote for the Negro world for Marcus Garner. Uh-huh. You know, people don't realize that. Jay Rogers, who wrote Sex and Race, Nature Knows No Color Line, um, he wrote for Negro World for Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey had a lot of historians writing for him, you know, for his newspaper. You know, even white philosophical slash Rosicrucians, because he, because, um, you know, they was all tied together. You know, in that sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Marcus Garvey was a Mason, for those who don't know. That's why you see him wearing the um, Southern Grand Commander cross on his, um, in his plume feather cap or hat. You know, with his, um, right, with his military um, um, garb on. But that's, I would say, that's Mason. That is Chapeau hat on. That's the Right, yeah. that's all right. That's the 33rd degree. <laughs> yeah, you know? People and just so, so, think by Right. So none of these brothers, all these brothers in which that we talk about it, and he, all of them was Masons or Rosicrucians. Yeah, they knew what time it was. These were the brothers who um, put their lives on you. And now you're saying that that is all, quote, unquote, Illuminati. But every time you go back and every time you go back and check, these are the ones on which that um, we're dealing with that information. They're the ones that brought that information out to you. We told you who you were. You know what is Martin? Yeah, think about that. Think about that. The Mason did it. Mm-hmm. Martin Delaney was a Mason, thirty-three degrees, and he did that. Marcus Garvey, thirty-three degrees, and he did that. Elijah so, Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad, right, exactly. Yeah. 33 did that. Nobu Ali, you know what I'm saying? Rosicrucian, Elk, um, and Mason, Shriner, he did that. You know, so not, y'all can... Not York. Exactly. Yeah, matter of fact, York here, yeah. York right, Mason. Yeah. Right. He sure was. I seen him with right. an apron on one time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, right. All right. So that's so. So please stop with the nonsense. Yeah, you they know? do because you you got brothers not only in the, the nation of Islam, but you got them also in the more science temple saying no, Elijah Muhammad was not a Mason, Noble Drew Ali was not a Mason. You know, and uh, that shows them how much homework, how much they done their homework. No. Well, no, it's do. how much they hide. The, they want to hide the, the facts and the proof. Mm-hmm. They don't want you to know that. They don't want you to know that um, the same ones in which that you're saying is Illuminati and the ones in which that you're saying held you down is the same ones in which I was trying to free you. <laughs> <laughs> they don't they want, want you to, to think that. Right. They want, they want you to think that it was all unattached unoaked people <laughs> who did this. Martin Luther King was a Mason, y'all. Mm-hmm. Malcolm X was a Mason, y'all. I didn't know Malcolm so X was a Mason. Yes. All your I sure didn't know. Most people yeah. that during that time were Mason. That was a popular thing, being a large. Yes. Most the majority of celebrities are. This was a popular thing at that time. Yeah. You know, we watched, uh, what was it, uh, the Sidney Poitier, uh, Bill Cosby movie when they was in the lodge? Yeah. That Ralph Cramden was in the lodge. Yeah. Ralph Cramden was in the lodge, you know, the honeymooners. The, uh, uh, the, the Flintstones. That was just a popular thing. That was, a, that was on Front Street. It wasn't on, nobody hiding nothing. Lauren Hardy was in the lodge. One of the episodes of Lauren Hardy was in the lodge. That was a popular thing. Nobody was hiding that. I want to tell you something I saw. I, I tried to call you, Eileen, last night, but something I saw in a movie, a 1932 movie, 32 movie. And this mm-hmm. European woman, was, she was an investigative journalist. She was looking in a disco rod 
because they had a herd go down there. She saw a man in the dark, so she ran. And the police was out there, and she told them, hey, uh, a man is in there. So the police said, uh, oh, can you describe who he was? I, I don't know, but I think he was an African Moor. <laughs> and then the police said, you said he was colored? Then she said, no, I, I, I just go look for him. The, 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 the Abiyam woman wouldn't respond to what the policeman said. She wouldn't respond right. to it. She stuck to her African Moor, statement that she made. And I'm like, what? <laughs> this is a 1933 movie. I think the, the movie was called The Mystery of the Wax Museum. Mm. That was the name of it. And I'm like, mm. wow. I mean, so, during no time, it was, it was, it was nothing. I mean, you know, I mean, think about it. Most of the, you know, movies, Abbott and Costello, they were talking about the French Foreign Legion and Lauren Hardy. They was doing movies about he was in the foreign legion and and then they showed the moors uh dressed in uh you know islamic garb or moorish garb you know uh you know humphrey bogart casablanca you know they, they wasn't hiding nothing everything was on front street and it was just up to us, us to pick up on it you know? it's up to us to pick up on it and a lot most of us did well, you know, I mean, those in the lodge did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so, they couldn't say anything. Right. You know. That's something. Sworn or oath. Yeah, yeah they are no oath, you know. You know, so, you know, it was nothing that was hidden. Hmm. You know, you watch Flintstone, like I said, uh, uh, Fred and Barney was in the lodge. Mm. Yeah, they were. Ralph Lodge and Poopa. Grand yeah, Lodge and Poopa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and they made fun of it, too, the Grand Poopa, you know. Poopa, yeah. Yeah, they made they made fun of it, you know. There was nothing, there was hiding nothing back then. It was a popular thing back then. Most of the celebrities during that time was in the lodge. That was a, that was a popular thing at that time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, no, it wasn't nothing that you know. That was that was common for us. You know, we a lot of people wasn't educated, uh, and, and they got into the law just to get be able to get certain jobs. A lot of them wasn't educated, and they didn't have you know have nothing going on for them as far as education. So they had to build relationships with people. So think about it. Your your large buddy may may be a supervisor or something. Mm-hmm. Hook you up with a job or hook you up with an apartment or whatever. That's you know, some people did things for for certain reasons. Mm-hmm. It's like they do things for certain reasons now in the entertainment world. You think people just getting big just to be getting big? They know somebody. They connected somehow. Mm-hmm. Right. And usually big enough their fraternity, you know, their college fraternity, or they in the large. Shaquille O'Neal openly admitted he was a Mason. Mm-hmm. Showed, uh-huh. showed off his right pointing it on on national TV. That's what TV. I'm saying. You know what oh, I'm saying? Really? <laughs> and he asked that um brother, oh you you watch it? Oh yeah, and he showed his oh yeah, you know I'm proud. Yeah, I'm I'm in there, and he showed he just flashing his right. You showing the right? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I missed that. Yeah. One. Hmm. No, I didn't miss it. I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Look at the main ones that's on these TV shows, you know, the Steve Harveys and all these other people. They, uh, uh, Ricky Smiley, they in fraternities and different things. You know, these people are just not, you know, getting it up there just be getting They connected somehow or something. Yeah, they, they're serious, yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, definitely. Cheryl, Un- uh, Cheryl Underwood, the comedian, she always pick up her fraternity publicly. She don't never right. hide that. That's part of That's part of who she is. Right, she's a native. You know, I think yeah. Richard Smiley, he's a capital. Yeah, they don't hide that. They they openly profess that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's how I go down. They ain't just getting up in there. They they connected somehow or something. That's right. And you're not saying, you're not saying it's not a negative component to it because it can be. But it, what we're saying is like it's like water, like fire. It can be used positively or it can be used negatively. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. You use drink water, you know what I'm saying? You rehydrate yourself. You know what I'm saying? If you was rehydrated. 
or you know what I'm saying, you use too much water, you drown. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You use, you use fire to cook your food, you know what I'm saying? You have a nice meal to eat. You use fire, burn down your damn house, and you ain't got nowhere to sleep. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, uh, you know I, it, think, I think, uh, uh, well, well Obama, you, you know you, me and Arlene both feed basins, don't you? You said what? Me and Arlene both are Freemasons. Oh, me too. Oh, oh we are Freemasons. Free oh. Ain't that something? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boys. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you're part of the Morris Wright. So oh, yeah, we're the Morris Wright. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be part of Morris Wright soon myself. Oh, yeah, part of the uh, Prince Hall, what was Benjamin Banneke Bay, actually. Fraternity. Well, that's all good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we Morris, we Morris, right? Yeah. Right, because um, the simple thing is that that's like what um, Clifford Hazel um, Bay told us, who's the most puissant. Islam upon him, he's the sole grand commander of the Scottish Rites of the uh, Western, um, you know, the um, I believe it's the Southern and Western. So, and he just passed a couple of months ago, a few months ago, about three months ago now. And, you know, it was real, it's, it's common sense that you should have a right in which that is your own. You know, there's the Scottish Rites, there's the York Rites. There's all types of other rights, you know, but yet there's, there was no Moorish rights. Uh-huh. You know, so, the key, so the key was to have your own. Yeah, definitely. You know, yeah, the right, Moorish right, right is the true Masonic order. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. 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 So the Moors start them. Moors right. science. Nothing but Moors science. Right. And the Prince Hall used to be known as the African Lodge, and we said they was called the Moorish rights. You know, matter of fact, mm-hmm. this is within the um, textbooks or various books within the Prince Hall Lodge is that they was called Moors in the older mm-hmm. books. You know, but this information is being hidden or not being recognized and being spoken of, you know. And I'm just saying hidden in a sense. It's just like in the Bible, you know, where it says that ye are gods in John 10, 34. But yet, you know, Jesus said that ye are gods. You know, and he yeah. said, "Well, who's uh, the scripture was? Um, if the scripture said it, then who am I in order to break it?" And that was yeah. in Psalms 80, 82, verse six. Right. He said, "Ye are gods. <laughs> you are all the sons and daughters of God, but you can fall like men." Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, right there, you know, it's not hidden. It's right there, but Christians don't talk about. It. And they say, "If you want to hide about. something, if you want to hide something, hide it in the book." You know? Yeah. Right, they they refuse to talk about, you know that, you know they'll mention Jesus, but they won't mention what Jesus said. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so that is the same. So that's the same thing which that is going on, um, you know, in some of these lodges. The information mm-hmm. is there, but mm-hmm. they won't come out and say, you know, what well, this is, this and this, you know. Because as far as they're concerned, once you read things over and over again, you begin to comprehend and you begin to embed some of this information within your cycle, you know, and they feel, you know, in the last part, I know I know the Europeans feel like, shoot, if you say that you're God, then uh, let, me, let me see you become God. Let me, let me um, see you come, put yourself from out of the darkness into the light. Let me, let mm-hmm. us see you do this. Mm-hmm. Hey. When you go to the uh, George Washington Masonic Memorial, uh, they have the uh, the uh, Templar room, and they have a hand reaching from the sky, and and a so-called European or pale-skinned Jesus floating to the sky, and he's reaching up to the dark hand. Now, of course, it don't look pale. It's a dark hand, just as dark as my hand. And, you know, me, I, you know, playing dumb. Uh, you know, what's the, what's that hand? You know, I asked the guy, uh, the tour guy, you know, what's that hand, uh, who's that hand reaching down from heaven? Uh, he's, he, and, of course, the tour guy is a mason. Uh, he said, well, that's God's hand. 
Mm-hmm. I said, oh, you know, you know, and I, I didn't say anything. That I'm playing dumb now. Uh, hmm. Wow, that's a dark, dark hand now, and I see this pale-looking Jesus floating up. So I'm like, well, what are you trying to say here? Mm-hmm. That, 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 the light, that the light came out the darkness. <laughs> mm. That's right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they said a picture says a thousand words, huh? So what is this picture saying here? Mm-hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "This is God," and I know he's pretty. You know, he, he probably could see pretty well because they made him the guide. I know they wouldn't hire a blind guy to guide people around. Mm-hmm. So I know right. he could see that that hand looked pretty dark there. Exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that goes back. He a god. So I mean, they they telling you that um, the black man is god. You know, the black woman is god. God is. You know, they telling us this. So I mean, it's it's just that goes back to when we get into the science of trust. You know what I'm saying? Um, even the aspect of trust, dealing with contracts of trust. You know that comes into play um, also, you know, mm. because um, we about uh, um, privacy, um, access, protection, uh, rendering yourself judgment proof, the ability to engage in any lawful business anywhere, diversification of assets into separate bulletproof compartments, elimination of probate and um, and estate taxes. So we were talking about how to eliminate. Um, um, taxes and by doing so, you put everything into a trust, a pure contract trust. You know, reduction of other taxes, elimination of government reporting, so you don't even have to report to the IRS. Um, being that it's unincorporated, you don't have a way in order to tap into um, books. And based on according to the United States Supreme Court, it says concerning privacy, a trust organization created under the United States constitutional right of contract cannot be abridged. This arrangement executed creates a federal organization not under the laws passed by any of the several states legislation, legislators. Do you hear that? It creates a federal organization hmm. not under the law passed by any of the several states legislators. This is United States versus Corrupts, um, Waterman versus McKenzie, Crockett versus employee, you know. So that is the science, is our learning, you know, trust information. This is what the mm-hmm. Rockefellers have done. You have the Cognitive Trust. You have the um, Rockefeller Foundation. You have the Ford Foundation. You know, all of these are trusts. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. You saw the movie you Descendants know, with uh, George Clooney? No, I haven't seen it. No, I, check it I, out. I, check it out. Check that movie out. The Descendants uh, with George Clooney in there. I'm, I'm gonna uh, speak on it real quick. The movie, yeah, of course, had a, a storyline to it. It really wasn't what I'm focusing on. But George Clooney uh, family, uh, you know, it really was a mixed family. It was uh, uh, people from Europe, Europe, who married. Uh, it's like this guy married a princess of Hawaii, you know, a part of Hawaii. And um, then the family was very rich, and they they inherited a uh, – they had a trust, and they inherited land, which was a, a large percentage of, of Hawaii based on them marrying into the this princess of Hawaii's family. Hmm. I mean, these people own, like, the, almost the whole of – you know, a big area of, of Hawaii. But the thing is, they didn't have no respect for it in the sense because they, you know, they wasn't, you know, they, you know, the mixed family. And, you know, they wasn't um, uh, part of really, uh, you know, had the culture of the of people of, of Hawaii. And that, that princess was very dark. And it was just like, wow, you know. And, of course, we know that, you know, as far as Hawaii is concerned, that's that's part of, you know, our empire as well because all this landmass was connected, you know. You know. You there? 
No. Yeah, so I, I just thought that was interesting because uh, yes, uh, just talking about that was, trust, yeah, right. like that trust, and they had all that land. Because, they're like, uh, okay, what are we going to do? What are we going to do with this land? Right. And uh, the, the Maui Hawaii Hawaii is more. Oh yeah, more. definitely. So the, that's what you see a lot of them very dark. With some people call them Samoans. Uh, uh, but they're part of us as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that that princess was very dark, and uh, you know, it was just really sad because they had this plan, and they just didn't have no. Yeah, you kind of well, kind of break it up again. You have, you have that trouble again, or what? You know, and this makes oh, you this just make make me yeah, see can, how hey, I can hear how. You. Yeah, this made me see how basically the land, a lot of our land, and a lot of things got we lost based on mixing with these Europeans. Yes. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, we lost a lot because the ones that the offsprings of these uh, children didn't have a knowledge of the history or the culture. No, no, they did not. You know, and it was amalgamated, and you know, and they just, you know, of course they vibrating on different frequencies, and you know, different states of consciousness, and you know, they just didn't have no knowledge. They just, they really didn't care. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, they became the possessors of, like I said in the movie, they had, they were the possessors of the trust, and they didn't have no knowledge and, and no respect for it. They ready to make some money. And that's they it. Get paid. And that's all. Yeah. And that, that was it, you know. Yeah. They looked at the, have, the yeah. wealth mm-hmm. aspects of it, yeah. and that was it. What they could get yeah. out of it. Mm. You know, and the indigenous people of that land saw the value of it, like, hell, what y'all going to do with that, man? Because, you know, they, they got the history. You know, they more closer to that than anything. Like, what y'all going to do? Mm-hmm. Well, that goes back to what we were just talking about with the trust is that um, you have to write the contract it's guaranteed by Article 1, Section 10 of the United States Constitution a matter mm-hmm. of fact um, I think it says no state shall make any law impairing the obligation of contract mm-hmm. so, um, I think it's guaranteed like in the 14th Amendment you know what I'm saying? Even though it wasn't, you know, the 14th Amendment, even though it wasn't fully ratified, it still states in there that no staff shall make or enforce any law that shall abridge the privilege or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive a person of life, liberty, and, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its um, the jurisdiction the equal protection of the law, of the laws. Um, so we know that there's two classes of entities available today, those who create with permission from the government, which is a corporation, partnership, sole priority ship, business license, driver's license, identification cards, you know what I'm saying, even trust, and those who are not subject to the jurisdiction of the um, government. Um, those created with government um, permission are subject to the government regulations, and the government can change the regulations whenever they wish, you know what I'm saying? Now, mm-hmm. corporations and other types of statutory entities, you know what I'm saying, as we just finished talking about, you know what I'm saying, are within that confines of all official persons. If you go back to what we said um, the other day, you know, when you read Blackstone Dictionary for a Petition, you look up all official person, it specifically says created by man made basically, you know what I'm saying, for use within, you know, by the government, you know what I'm saying, and it basically also says that it's a corporation and it's distinguished mm-hmm. from a natural person. Mm-hmm. All right. So a contract trust is a common law entity, not subject to statutory control. So it's not created by the government permission as corporations are, you know, and that's why most lawyers don't learn about constitution and common law. They learn statutory law. They swear an oath to uphold statutory law, basically. You know, that's supposed to be the Constitution. They don't know anything about the Constitution. They they know statutory law, though. 
So right, so pure, right, so pure contract trust is not subject to statutory intrusions, and so we have to learn. Um, we have to learn um, pure um, contract. We have to learn um, pure trust or express trust. Common law express trust. So we have to learn these particular things. You know, and that's how these individuals, this is why they can't touch the Rockefellers. This is why they can't touch the Cogneys. This is why they can't touch the Fords. This is why they can't touch any of these, um, J.P. Morgan. They, they can't touch any of these because these people have these trusts. Huh. They use their trust as the citizen. They use their trust as the citizen. Mm-hmm. This is why they marry into each other. Right, and you and you can so therefore there's just like with the rock of, um with the um Kennedys when the Kennedy um uh, when Edward Kennedy um that girl, uh-huh. you know um remember that he took the girl, yeah. they weren't able to go right. into the right they you know they was they weren't able to go into the trust money and get no money from that. Man, you didn't get none of that. But therefore, right. they can't build a case off of it. With our cases, right, uh, whatever kind of case it is, right. uh, that deals with right. money or so-called money. But you but can't even build can't a case off of it. You can't build a case off of it. Wow. Right. And see, this, right, you can't even build a case off of it. Matter of fact, go to um, Hell versus Hinkle. That's the United States Supreme Court case law. It says there's a, there is a clear distinction in this particular case between an individual and a corporation. Check this out now. And that the latter has no right to be to submit its books and papers for an examination at the suit of the state. The individual may stand upon his constitutional rights as a citizen. He is entitled to carry on his private business in his own rule. His power to contract is unlimited. He owes no such duty to the state since he receives Nothing therefrom. In other words, you're not, if you're not receiving any benefits from the state, then the state has no business in your business. <laughs> huh. Beyond the protection of his life and property, his rights are such as to exist by the law of the land, long um, um, antecedent to the organization of states, and can exist by the law of the land. It can only be taken from him by due process of law and in accordance with the Constitution. Amongst his rights or a refusal to incriminate himself and the immune of himself and, the, and his property from arrest and seizure except under a warrant of law. He owes nothing to the public so long as he does not trans, trans, trespass upon their rights. So this is um, versus Hinkle. You know, so there's a difference between an individual Okay. Operating as a so-called individual, even though we don't even like to use that term, but we use it in this particular regard because they use it in this case, and a corporation. <coughs> that that, that they um, may stand upon the constitutional rules. Hmm. What did it, what did it, what did that, what did we say that? Uh, a uh, person cannot make any intrusions on his estate, but what about a person that is uh, uh, drawing disability from Social Security? How does that work? How does uh, how does that work? You know. Well, remember, with functionality, when you put it on the public record, um, and you have the clerk to seal it, sign it, date it, um, that goes into the public record, in microfiche. And or put it into their file if they give you the original or give you back a copy of the true original copy is going to be dated and sealed from the state from the county. It goes into their database, and so you are able to uh, maneuver. Still, you know, what I'm saying if you choose to, until you bring that information up, if you choose. You choose not to bring it up, you know, then you don't have to. Okay. In other words, you don't have to um change any of your um of your benefits. It's not necessary. Destroy okay. man is on that. 
right. The straw man is already there. So what a person would do is do a UCC um, financial statement. You know, that's what um, I would do. You know, and what that is the uniform part of the uniform commercial code. It's part of the um, fraud in which that's been um, issued, but it's something in which that you can still utilize because there's no birth certificate attached to your indigenous appellation. Mm-hmm. So, um, what they do have is a copy of that birth certificate in the stock market or international trade. Well, how do you capture that? How can you tap into it? How can you say that you're able to your claim and lean over that instrument? And the only way you can do it is do a UCC financial statement. Mm-hmm. You do That's it nationally. You do. you do it nationally through any of the um, so-called 50 um, unions in the state, or you do it through Washington, D.C., in which that you make it into an international UCC, mm. you know? And the thing is to protect your property and assets. That's what it's for. So here it is. Your birth name has all of this. And so you transfer everything over to your indigenous appellation. So everything in which that was at Robert Heron is now been transformed and transferred to Fahim L. And now Fahim L um, is the CEO or president of his corporation, which is his name spelled in all caps, his slave. He's mm-hmm. captured his own slave. And now he's mm-hmm. used his own slave in order to do his business for him, just like Slave was doing business doing 200 years ago. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. And so that is key. So now, so now, wait, anything for which that they have with Robert Herring, you don't have to worry about that now. You know, because now that is controlled by Fahim L. And Fahim L can say, write a letter to these corporations to them to say, well, you do business, then, you know, based on my affidavit of copyright to our trading, it's $1 million each offense. You know, if you, um, if you want to do business, then we can talk about business. I'll send you an invoice. Here's my bill. <laughs> <laughs> That's up, baby. <laughs> That's true navigation. Yes, sir. That's how you navigate, so, I mean, brother. Right. That's the way we're going to have to begin to start being. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, I've already begun it. I got it, uh, about half of them notarized already. I'm getting the other half uh, notarized next week and get them going, right. take them to the uh, uh, county records of deeds and get them probably put it on public record. So uh, right. when I get to doing that, I will let you know, and you tell me what to uh, do from there. Right. Well, yeah. now you send your information off to um, Jacob Liu, who just replaced Timothy Guyton as the United States Secretary of Treasury. And you send the information to him now in a vanilla envelope with the red reg- with the red mail tab, a red registered mail tab on the envelope. And that which the mail tab becomes your UCC trust account number. Mm. All right? Along with out the dashes, your social security number without the dashes. Mm. Right? That is your exemption account. And then the password to your exemption account is the number that's on the back of the social security card, which is based on those 12 for the reserve banks that we went over um, before. Mm. A O L. You know, we talking about banks all the way from Boston. We talking about New York. We talk about Atlanta, Georgia, Cleveland, Ohio. We talking about um, Minnesota, um, or Minneapolis. Uh, we talking about you know these particular banks. These banks are within these particular cities and locations. Richmond, Virginia, Charleston, um, um, um Charlotte, um, North Carolina. You know, um, matter of fact, Richmond, Virginia, and Charlotte, North Carolina, that's connected to um, E on the back of Social Security card. Atlanta, Georgia is F for those who have F, you know. For those who have B, I think it's New York. For those who have C, it's Boston, you know. So I can't remember, the, you know, all the order right now, but that is basically what is going on. These are the 12 for the Reserve Banks. 
And these are the ones in which that has routing numbers. And you can actually put routing number on your negotiable instrument, which is uh, what you would make as an international money order or what you would make is your international bond. And you make sure that you have um, the quiet things that you need. You want to make sure you have a laser um, um, printer, um, you know, um, to make sure that is uh, fine micro um, print. You know, you want to make sure you have the best quality. You want to make sure you have bond paper, which is resume paper. Mm-hmm. You want it, um, you want 100%, you know what I'm saying? Um, you, want, you want it, you know, cotton, you know, and I think it's like um, the weight of it is like 35%. You know, mm. so, I mean, you know, that's the type of resume paper that you want. And that's the type of stuff that you use um, to write your bonds on. And then, um, you know, also, you know, you use um, um, about 25% um, cotton paper on white paper, you know, resume paper, in which that you can use in order to um, also check in paper. You want check paper. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you have to go into, and you want to be able to write these, um, you know, use these routing numbers, these particular exemption accounts, the password, which is the um, pay levy bond number, which is the back of security card, also the upper right um, upper right hand corner of your birth certificate, you know what I'm saying, um, which is your um, bo- um, your bond number on your birth certificate connected to it. But it's, hmm. your, um, state, it's your state so, file number. The all of this information right goes part of the birth certificate. Right, and all of this information goes into your um, into your international um, or your negotiable or your negotiable instrument. Hmm. Okay. Or this goes on to your um, onto the bond. You know, all of this information goes onto this, so that you can arrange it properly, so that they know where to take the funds from from the exemption account. You know, when you're trying to set off, a, you know, set off debt. You know, of course, they, you know, they call it discharging. Um, they call it um, charge back. You know, but essentially it's, it's just set off. You know, or what is called the set to provide process or condition or conditional was set to provide. You know, and you want to make sure that you always protect yourself by saying, um, you know, make it known and important whether it does not apply. Kind of breaking up again. Uh, well, yeah, I know. I almost start breaking up when I start talking about this stuff. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Yeah. But I'm giving now. I'm talking about this shit. Hmm. You know what they need. You know, ain't nobody doing this. Tell you exactly what you need. You kind know, of breaking up. Want, you know, I'm breaking up because I'm going too deep. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. You know, it's just said, oh, no, no. He let it out. Let it out. Oh, no, that information is beyond what we want folks to know. <laughs> Stop him. Stop him right now. <laughs> uh, well, we, yeah, they can do They can do it. Well, we're going to do lectures and workshops and seminars on it so you can't stop it. No. No, the the, the, conscious, the consciousness is out here. You know, it's all out here. You no, know, they, they don't have enough. They don't have enough anything to stop it. Like David Blair said, it's like a an ant trying to stop a, a tidal wave. All right, phone lines. We got every code two four zero and the code two four zero. You on the line? Greetings, two four zero, you're on the line. Peace. 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 It's a lot Sunday. How y'all brothers doing? Oh, well, brother. Doing good. How are you? Yeah, we How great. Everything is well. My man, Aileen, I seen you was going in. He do it to you every time, brother. Oh, yeah, trying to, brother. If people can hear me, you know what I'm saying? But um, you, you know how that is. Yeah, I, I, know, I know exactly how it is. I'm sitting here in the car laughing. I'm in the car, um, and around 9.31, when it really started to get deep and you was going in, I seen uh, what they call a shooting star, but we know that it's just debris burning up in the atmosphere. 
Mm-hmm. So once I seen that, I said, yeah, he in there now. He ain't going to be too much longer. <laughs> 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 yeah, I just want uh, I'm also um, Ancient Free Moors Wright Mason. I enjoyed y'all, um, y'all, y'all build. It's real deep. Y'all had me in here talking, uh, thinking about Secret Squirrel and Morocco Mole, and he used to keep the feds on him. Yeah, yeah, he did. Oh. And Morocco Mole was the main one to figure everything out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, they, they give us, they they give a lot of things in um in TV. So what they do is they put the truth in plain sight. That way you don't even pay attention, or the unconscious won't pay attention. Right. Uh, yeah. But about they for eternal orders, which is not theirs at all, because what they do is they take the symbolism and they leave the substance. Mm-hmm. See, they yeah, exactly. Have, you know, and, and the lesson is mentioned that they study from 35 to 50 years to try and learn to do like the original man. So mm-hmm. for us to go into their fraternities, all we're going to do is get their symbolism, and we already know who we are, but they're not going to give us the secret, which is that the black man and woman is Allah or God. Mm-hmm. You know, because a lot of times when they talk about God and all reality, they're addressing the black woman because she is our law. She's the one who created the body without the use of nails or the sound of a hammer in nine months of conception. Yeah. 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 You know, so she, they're not going to give up these secrets, but, you know, that's why all of our teachings are sacred to us. You have the um, the strong grip of the lion's paw right there on the pyramid. You have man being resurrected from a horizontal to a perpendicular right on the pyramid. The story of Hiram Abib is only 900 years old, and they base that on another one of our stories. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So all the, all these things is always coming back to us, and it's, all, it's, it's very good that um, you have these forums where people may not be um, – you know, to get where you guys are at. And and for them to just call in and listen, at the least it'll spark some type of food for thought which they can take in and digest because everything that the brother Eileen's saying, you can go you can go and look it up. It's right and exact. Yeah. yeah. You know? It, it, it's right and exact. It's, you can go right there and look it up. And and, and that's what it takes. It takes um a person to get the knowledge and to go ahead and read, get the wisdom through reading, through through speaking with brothers, and applying the sciences that we come to understand, and that's when they'll really start to see what's going on. Because there's so many uh, movies. Look at um Shakespeare's play Othello. He didn't call him the Negro, the Black, or the Color. He said Othello. Yes, mm-hmm. he did. And when you go to those old dictionaries, when they talk about land, it's talking about it, it's called they they use the word moor as synonymous with land. Mm-hmm. So it's talking about our direct connection to um, all all over the planet Earth. You know, I just want to tell y'all brothers that I enjoyed um I enjoyed it still very much. Um, I leave my I always whenever you got blow up talk, always listen in whether it's to the computer or to the phone. You know, um, reading material, especially on uh, one of the books that you wrote, one of the many, it was uh, that first world order. That was something that's like, I was like, yeah. man, how do you take all the knowledge from many lifetimes and put it in one little book? I still don't understand completely how you did it, but then I'm glad you did. But a uh, certain knowledge that I got, I go to, I read a chapter, and the beginning of the chapter, that might have been the first part of my life what I was studying. In the middle of the chapter, that might have been the mid part of my life what I was studying. At the end of the chapter, this is stuff that I'm just learning now. And I was like, dang, you put this all in one chapter? <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's, a that's a brilliant uh, brother right there. Yeah. You know, definitely, you um, know, yeah, man, I just wanted to add on, share my little, um, my two red more cents, and I'm going to kick back and listen. All right, bro. But uh, it's definitely been a pleasure, brothers. Peace. Yeah, peace. Hey. 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 Yeah, Appreciate that you, book would have been, yeah, been bigger than that. You already know, I mean. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right, right, right. You got to chop it down. Yeah, there was a lot of chopping. <laughs> All right, we're going to go to area code 919. Area code 919, you're on the line. 
Green and Peace, 919, are you cold? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes we got you. Yes. Hey, brother. Peace. All right, Islam, what's up? Man? Islam. 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 Um, you know, I was, um, what was I think? I was listening to Jordan Maxwell, the European dude, but he was kind of saying a lot of the, what we're talking about, or like he was kind of basically talking about more science, but he wouldn't, of course he didn't say more science. He was going in on how all the legal terms and stuff, he was really just demonstrating on the morality of the courtroom. I just thought it was crazy. I was listening to that earlier and now. You were going in, and it was pretty much on point, uh, Dr. Aline. <clears throat> but um, I had a couple questions. Can, is that all right? Go ahead, brother. Definitely. Yeah, all right. All right. So, like, what about how, so, Ruth the Moabitess, can you just go in on what Ruth the Moabitess represents and how that might tie into Israel? And for Isis Rael and how all that relates to us, if that makes sense. And yeah, that's pretty much that's like my first part of my question. All right. Well, this is real simple. Ruth actually symbolizes root or O O T. Um, being the mother principle, she was actually symbolic to the Kundalini energy. Mm. Um, root. Um, was correlated to Jacin and Boaz, you know, which symbolizes the two pillars. Um, she herself symbolizes the middle pillar or the spinal column in which that the Kutalini comes up through the middle of, you know, which actually is what gives birth or give life to this physical body or give life to extension of this physical body, which is through the sexual energy, through the sexual nature or principle. You know, um, so hence it says that um, Jesus came from the root of David. You know, um, that is symbolic once again to root. Talking about your genes, your um, your biology. You know, so when we talking about root being a Moabite, remember we said that the word land in, West, in um, Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition, means um, it's synonymous with the word M O O R S. So when you look it up, Moors and land are synonymous. So hence, Moabite, you know, is talking about root producing more Moors into physical existence, which automatically is tied to land because, um, as they say, when the one passes on or dies to transform, they say ashes to ashes and dust to dust. And they're talking about your physical body going back to the elements in which that is made from which is from the the clay of the ground, which is the midst of water and the dirt, uh, which is known within the Holy Quran as black mud, which is talking about actually carbon, which actually is a celestial element, not just a physical element, you know, because we know that the sun itself um, is what produced the planets into existence, you know, gave birth to these particular planets. So this is the science of what is really going on. Who um, symbolizes um, our very nature, our sexual nature, our um, our, our internal chi, our key force energy, our, our life force energy personified. So hence the more abidance, you know, which is the mother principle, you know, which that's what that is all talking about essentially, brother. Now, I don't want to go, you know, go into too much metaphysics, but that is essentially what it is astrologically, based on cosmology and also based on um, esoteric um, teachings. All right. I'm sorry. I don't mean to take this. Had, it's all right. And you said you had another question? You said you had two questions, right? Yeah. So maybe this will put it more back into the, what we're talking about tonight. But So should you put your, should you change the name, change whatever you want to call it, change your name on your security card. So if I adopt A or L at the end of my name, should I put my social security card or should I just only do like a common name change or, you know what I mean? 
Who should I? The choice is if you're dealing in commerce, then um, you might want to do the um, the um, card. You might want to do the social security card. But if you're not dealing with commerce and you already have a way of supplying food for yourself, for your family, you already are doing garden, you already are doing, and you already have land in which that is um, tax exempt or that is no longer on the um, tax roll, then, of course, you, know, you no longer need to do anything as far as dealing in commerce in that regard if you already are back to the land by that way. But if you're not and you're trying to get back to the land, then we recommend that you do um, do your name. You do an affidavit of common law name correction, and you would choose your indigenous appellation and use El, Bay, Day, Al, Ali on the end of the name. And then you would um, take that. Once it's to the register of deeds, put on record, then you get down to the Social Security Tell them that you had a name change, and then they would change the name for you um, on the card, but you do not change the name um, on your birth certificate. You do not mess with your birth certificate, um, you know, because that is the original contract. You can capture, like you said, through a UCC financial statement or one financial statement. Um, then you can get the DMV um, if you choose to and get an ID card, all right, as proof. So that if you need to open up a bank account, um, you can do so under your indigenous appellation. And being that there's no birth certificate tied to that name, then you feel free because a birth certificate means that is a bond. You, that is, and based on you turning 18, then that's bondage, bond of mm. age. Mm. So bondage. So being that there is no bondage attached to your indigenous appellation, you don't have. Mustafa um, Bay do not have a birth certificate. He has a baptismal record or a live claim birth form in which they have a birth certificate at the register of deeds because that is where you go to get a birth certificate and a death certificate is at the register of deeds. Those are bonds. So you put your own, um, you know what I'm saying, Freedom document in, which is your baptismal record. And it's still legal within many of the states. You can still use a baptismal record to to, to avoid getting um, vaccination shots for political, cultural, or religious reasons. You can um, still use a baptismal record. You know what I'm saying? There's proof um, of who you are, you know, at a bank, at, um, at the um, DMV. In different other places, you can still do that. What baptismal record? Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. you want a baptismal record at the um, county level, um, in order to kind of act what they defraud and what should be triggered on you. So you put yourself back in proper standing on what is called this is um, proper um, um, proper persona juris. You want to be back in proper persona juris. Yes, All right. Uh, yeah, well, I'm getting my, I'm saving my donation so I can uh, make sure I get your assistance in that matter. I appreciate it. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate Peace. you. Appreciate yeah. you, bro. Peace. And we got area code 919, area code 919. We, you know, Kalani's lighting up. I'm talking about 919. Yeah, it must be. Peace. Peace there. This is Brother Kareem. Peace. Peace, Brother Kareem. How you doing? Peace. I'm doing all right, brother. I'm I'm listening to to what everything. I like everything what you're talking about, brother. All right, appreciate that. Definitely appreciate that. Did you add any questions, Brother Kareem? Uh, no, brother. I'm I'm just listening there, you know. Appreciate it. All right, appreciate you for listening. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah, all right, thank you, my brother. Appreciate it. All right. So um we got some closing comments. We got eight minutes left. Um anything you wanna build on 
Um, we're probably going to have to end up having part three. So <laughs> Yeah, since they kind of messed us around this time, you know. Right, so Monday we're going to go right back into it, and um, we're going to go into more information, um, dealing more with executive letter and, um, and more um, trust information. Um, also about the signs of this trust, to make sure that it's unincorporated. Um, we want to make sure that it's an unincorporated business trust organization. And, um, you know, otherwise known as a declaration of trust or a pure trust, or which is also known as an, an express trust. Um, you don't want it to be in trust or a partnership or a company or a corporation or a joint venture or a limited partnership or a limited liability company, you know, or a trust as defined by the IRS codes or the um, IRRC, which is the Internal Revenue Code. You don't want that. So you want to make sure that it's unincorporated. So what you would do is go down to um, the Secretary of State Department and you would fill out an unincorporated um, organization form, which is about five dollars, you know. And you would put um, the name of the organization as a trust onto that form. Then you would call down to the IRS once it's passed through, and get an EIN number on that particular trust. And then you would begin to start putting everything into your trust, whether it's your car, your house, your land, or et cetera. So that's the best way in order to do it. I'm just going to sum that up. Um, brother Olabala, anything you want to drop on before we go? And also you, Brother L. Uh, yes. Uh, I just All I'm saying is uh, I'm going to uh, continue uh, following for my UCCs and uh, get this thing on the road here. And uh, I'm uh, I'm always learning something, even if some, learning something new, you know, and this is what I love about this forum, you know, and getting the people on and connecting and calling in, you know, and 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 so we can uh, give them the information too, also. So that's uh, right. We, you know, we can keep on doing the good work that we're doing out here. Yes. Yes. I mean, it, it was a great show. I mean, uh, as always. And uh, definitely, it's very important. Um, uh, and I look forward to part three, uh, yeah, <laughs> which was just saying, yeah, what you were just saying about, you know, not getting the LLC because most people they they want to start business and they say, oh, let me get me an LLC. You know, they thinking they doing something, you know. But we right. have to really do things right, or uh, you know. Uh, or we just get jammed up. See, one thing the rich people do, or people who who who, who uh, know better, because you can get money and go bankrupt tomorrow. But <laughs> but right. but people who know better, uh, especially like people like Robert Kiyosaki, uh, rich, the uh, right. author, rich that poor dad, they tell you to uh, control everything, own nothing. So that's yeah. just what you're talking about as far as the corporations are concerned. Yeah. You know, and right. putting things under the corporation. You know. Under the trust. Very important. That's very important to put everything under the trust. Exactly. But that's exactly what they do. That's David Rockefeller's that was his motto. Own nothing. Control everything. So you definitely wanna um leave y'all with that. And um we're gonna check y'all out just coming Monday and we out of here, y'all. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday at 8 o'clock, we are now going to make this the hottest day of the week. 
seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates the bring about specifics in the room based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. For seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates the bring about specifics in the room based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it.